Hey y'all, this is Jamie with Out of Bounds with Jamie and Abby. Yes, and on this episode of um, Out of Bounds, we had Raylan, a country music artist. She was so kind and sweet and just... I loved her. Yeah. absolutely loved her. Yeah, we talked um, a lot about her career mm-hmm. and family and um, what she's doing next going on tour. So we hope you guys enjoy that. And we were lucky enough to record at Blackbird Studio, a renowned recording studio in Nashville, Tennessee. I feel like I'm a little bored tonight. Take over the city, yeah, baby. Follow my lead, everybody get ready. All my girls are with me tonight. Let's turn it up now. Thanks for being here. Oh my here. gosh, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm really so pumped. very excited. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. One of the other things that I would love to talk to you about, yeah. if you would allow it, is type 1 diabetes. Of um, course. As our listeners know, my 16-year-old has type 1. This April will be 10 years that wow. she's had it. Wow. Wow. And the goal of my husband and I is to raise awareness for this disease. We felt like God has handed us this child with this disease and given us a platform to raise awareness and fundraising for it. So I thank you so much for allowing us to talk about it. It's such a funny thing that you talk about raising more awareness around diabetes because Back when I got diagnosed, I got diagnosed at 12. So your daughter got diagnosed at six. At six. Oh my goodness gracious. When I think about how hard it was for me to make that transition into giving myself insulin shots, checking my blood sugar at 12, I can't imagine your daughter having to do it at six. And I have a daughter now and I'm like, I would literally be like freaking out anywhere she went, worried about her blood sugar. So Mm -hmm. that is just crazy. I'm already starting to cry. Yeah, I knew it's, it. it's, it's just, it's hard. And for me, so I got diagnosed at 12 and I don't know your daughter's story, but I went into a thing called DKA. My sugar yes. was so beyond high and had stayed there for such a long period of time that my organs started shutting down. Yeah. Oh, wow. And the only vein that they could get was like right by my leg because there was not even a, a vein that was available. Like it was, wow. it was actually pretty crazy. I was 10 minutes from, from passing away and it was very traumatic awful I'm so thankful to Jesus that I'm here today you know I've been one of those kids I hated going to the doctor Mm -hmm. like I literally hate going to the doctor (laughs) and I hate shots I hate all of it and so when (laughs) when the doctor told me I was gonna have to take shots for the rest of my life I was like uh, what no. <laughs> me like I was like so upset yeah. and of course they don't tell you that the needles are really tiny right. and there's so many incredible things now but back in the day it was like a science experiment every time you had to take a shot like, yes. you have to like get the bubbles out of the needle pull it back like now oh you have God. pumps and yes. sensors and Jesus has made it so much easier exactly but back then it was like like you were doing a science experiment at your desk yes. like it was so different but you know when I think back on my journey of of having type one I was so like insecure about it, Mm -hmm. especially at 12. Like, and I'm sure your daughter went through this period a little bit, Yeah. but there is a lot more resources now than there was back then. But I remember like wanting to take shots, like in the corner at a friend's house, like when I would go to like a birthday party and I, you know, I hated like, like doing swim parties because I knew my sugar would drop and I didn't want the attention to be on me if my sugar dropped. That was one of Taylor's triggers is every time she swam. That yes. her, I mean, plummet. Yes. I mean, because she's exercising mm-hmm. so much. And I went through a period when I was like 15, 16, where I just didn't want my disease anymore. I was yeah. like, I don't want this. And I didn't take care of myself. And I, like, uh, my A1C was super high. And if you don't know what A1C is, it's basically what your blood sugar has been for the last three months. And mm-hmm. I remember my doctor, I came in and I, and I wrote like, you know, bogus numbers that were so oh, like, cause God. I forgot that they checked your A1C. <laughs> and uh, so I, th- I forgot that that was going to tell on me. And so I was like, Oh, my sugar has been like a hundred. I'll throw a 200 in there. Like, you know, like, <laughs> like really being like casual with it. And, <laughs> and so anyways, she goes, so Rachel, your numbers don't really match with what your A1C is. So oh somebody's lying and I don't think it's your A1C number. And yeah. I was like, I lied. I was just like, and I just owned it. And she like, the way she broke it down to me was so cool. She was like, she's like, what do you want to do when you get older? And I said, I would love to be a country artist. I would Mm -hmm. love to be a musician and an actress. And I have all these, you know, dreams and aspirations. And she said, she's like, well, none of those are going to come true if your health Mm -hmm. is never in line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she started talking to me about the importance of taking care of my body. It was like a therapy session almost. She's like, it's okay to be insecure. It's okay to go through these things, but that only hurts you. It doesn't hurt anybody else. 
And she said, anytime you feel that way, just educate people. And so that's what I started doing. Like I, that's I felt like, you know, if I'm, I'm going to wear a pump, I'm going to wear it out. I'm going to just, I'm going to, it's, it, it's my daily life and there's yeah. nothing I can do about it or change about it. And all I can do is raise awareness around mm-hmm. it. And there's so many people like me. Yeah. And once I started finding diabetic friends, it was easier for me, but I didn't have any friends with diabetes till I was like 20. Really? Yeah. And it's like, and I'm, you know, 27 yeah. now. So yeah. it was, it was a while till I found a really great community. For me, I had the Rayland Diabetes Fund because I wanted to be able to give money where it needed to right. be like some people right. just can't afford their insulin supplies or I think about you know, that all so the time. many things and that's one thing that gets me it's like I'm just so grateful that God's given me mm-hmm. the means to take care of this disease but I'm like we have to live yeah like and I think that there needs to just be such an awareness to take care of those families that that don't have yeah the means to do that and two when you meet a kid or mm-hmm. somebody that has diabetes you just give them a hug because you know that what their daily life is it's mm-hmm. just like oh I just want right. to hug you because I know we got this, it's like this common yeah. thing. You well, know? that's what my husband and I, we always say, because we do, when we hear of families that have just been diagnosed, we're the first ones to reach out whenever yeah. we find out. Because when Taylor was diagnosed, we didn't know anybody. No, yeah. So now it's, we're like, welcome to the family. This is yeah. a family you did not choose, a family that you don't want to belong to, but it is what it is, and we have to stick together. And... I mean, there are times to where there was a school teacher at Taylor's school. His daughter had diabetes. Called me one day, Jamie, our insulin didn't come in. Can we borrow a vial? Yeah. I mean, that's what you do is you you have to stick together. Yep. And Taylor did go through a stage, like at the beginning, at six years old, it was almost kind of cool that she had it. You know, she was getting lots of attention at school and she was the first one, the first day she went to school, she was like, I want to show them how I prick my finger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got in the middle of her class and did it. And it was amazing. But when she hit, I want to say about 12, 13 years old, she did go through a phase. And honestly, it it correlated to the time we moved to Nashville Mm -hmm. to where nobody knew that Taylor. Nobody knew what, you know, what diabetes was and all that. So she tried to hide it. Mm -hmm. And she was on the pump. And she she went and put her numbers in because she didn't want to pull it out in the middle of lunch. And she did. She went through a really, really hard time. And it was at the doctor's office to where I realized what was going on because our A1C was like 10 point something, which for our listeners, really, you want it to be around six. Six. That's really high. That really broke her down. And that was a time I finally was like, okay, I really think you need to see a therapist, even if you don't feel like you need one it's just good to talk to somebody who's not me yes Mm -hmm. so we found an amazing doctor here and she does anytime she feels the need she'll just go and have a little chat for an hour but she got out of that little funk yeah and now she's back to raising awareness for the gala she's our keynote speaker this year that's so awesome and she talks about it in front of school and she's gonna go through this again when she's in college oh she's totally gonna go through it again you know I'll never forget when I went on a date with my husband and I was like oh god I don't want to take I don't want to take a shot right now (laughs) I'm at Panera with this hot guy Panera that's like me going to Applebee's yeah like straight up like I went to Panera on 21st (laughs) and you know, I remember being like, hey, well, I got to take a shot. And he's like, he thought it was a shot of alcohol. Oh, oh God. He was like, this <laughs> this early? Okay. And I was like, no, like an insulin shot. Like, I, I have diabetes. And I thought he wasn't going to like me. And then I was oh. like, you know what? What the hell? Like, he's going to, well, if he doesn't like me because I have diabetes, yeah. you know, he's not he's cool. He's not good. Yeah. Yeah. Not, and of course, you live. know, he liked me. Oh. Got married. <laughs> and that's another thing, too. I didn't realize how much fear there was around being pregnant with diabetes. Oh, oh god. The best I've ever felt was pregnant. Are you serious? Girl, I get pregnant again tomorrow. No I way. felt so good. My sugar was like 5.2, my A1C. I it was no. like a normal person's A1C. I've never felt more incredible than I did when I was pregnant. What's the explanation behind because that? Because you have to keep your numbers so tight, mm-hmm. like between like they can't go over 130. Mm-hmm. Like it's really tight. Mm-hmm. And it seems hard, but it's I really do believe that God creates your body in the most beautiful ways when you're when you're carrying a baby. It's like it knows that it has to go into this fight or flight yeah, mentality. Right. And my sugar would go down to sixty and it would just stay there. 
I was so nervous to get pregnant. I was so nervous to go through that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I thought I was going to have to get a surrogate. I mean, I thought all these things. And some people do. You know, some people's diabetes is so bad because you don't need to carry a baby yeah. if your yeah. A1C is high. Right. Because you're just going to damage the baby. But I want to start raising more awareness around that, too, is like just talking to like talking to people through that. Yeah, absolutely. I remember the, when Taylor was diagnosed, uh-huh. my father, my father actually, he, everybody was upset, obviously, but he kept thinking of still magnolias. Oh, yeah. Drink your juice, Shelby. Yes. I, listen, <laughs> I know it. That's all he kept thinking is about. Is when she has the kid that, that she's going to die. Don't it, watch like, it. Oh, oh, I know. It's it, the worst. It, it's the worst movie it, that portrays movie. type one. And no. my dad was like, she's not going to be able to get pregnant. No. She, you know? No, it's, it's like, so <laughs> funny. My doctor, he's a little cuckoo cachoo, but I love him, but he's weird as hell in the best way. I love him. <laughs> but, the, of course, the first thing he says to me, he's just funny. I love him, though. I, like He's my favorite person. So I was like, hey, I'm pregnant. So I was like, I need to do a telehealth with you and we were talking he goes only advice don't watch Joe Magnolia that's the first thing he said <laughs> no, and I was uh, like so come true. on Dr. Bomb like oh, don't tell me that so true. but it was like but it, he's so right he goes just don't watch it and it's just like oh. it's so true but that's so our generation yeah. that mom was like oh, what about just, uh, Shelby <laughs> didn't drink her juice and I was like okay mom okay everything's gonna be okay we're in the 21st oh. century now let me tell but you yes, when, that's hilarious when Taylor I forgot how old she was she may have been 11 years old I wasn't thinking yeah and I started watching it with her oh, and I'm God. like <gasps> Oh my gosh, she's gonna freak out. And so I had to, I'm like, Taylor, listen, this is a movie. You know, they exaggerate things in yeah. movies. Mm-hmm. So all she did was laugh through the movie. Okay, she's good, like, good. You Thank you, God. Are you kidding me? Like, oh, my oh God. it was. Weezer. Just... I love that part. I love Weezer. <laughs> I love that whole movie. That's one of my, that's oh literally my one gosh. of my favorite movies. When you were first diagnosed, what were your symptoms? I, I mean, I know what your symptoms probably well, so were, but my how did sugar, it go? My sugar had stayed high for so long. We had just actually came back from Nashville. I was 12. My cousin had just got engaged, so they were having an engagement party up here. And the whole time, I was just going to the bathroom a lot. Like, So when your sugar is high, you just literally can't keep any liquids down like Mm-mm. you always have to go to the bathroom so thirsty it's, you're so thirsty and my I was the fifth kid so it's like my mom was like oh she's going through growth spur or she's mm-hmm. you know and it wasn't any shame on her I just don't think she knew no. the signs and she had type two so she didn't even know type one existed like type two's mindset is you're overweight like that's you mm-hmm. know that's a lot of type two and my, uh-huh. she's like my daughter's you tiny, know, tiny. And, little, and I was yeah. losing a lot of weight and but I was getting taller so my mom thought okay Mm-hmm. She's just she's just That's going through a growth at twelve. Yeah, you know, and so we get back to Texas, and I like I. That's when my organs were shutting down. I was mm-hmm. like, Mom, I feel bad. Like, I want to go to the hospital. And I never say that. And she lifted up the cover, and I was just tired yeah. all the time. And my legs are black and blue. And she was what? like, okay. And so that's when we call. <gasps> and some people find out because their sugar goes so low. Yeah. And when your sugar goes low, you just need to go to the hospital. When your sugar's high, you don't really know until mm-hmm. a couple, a couple, you know, months. And I, mean, th- I think my sugar when I went in was like 1100. It was something was ridiculous. It really? Taylor's, yeah. Taylor's was 600 around in the 600s. Ooh. And she was on the verge of DKA. Oh, God. And, but we caught it to where yeah. it was. Thank but God. The thing is, is like when you, when you don't know what to look for, you don't no. know and so that's why i think my mom had a lot of regret and my dad but it's not their fault no i mean like they don't we didn't know like no and two it's just i, I should have known and my brother like he's such a he was such an ass it was like really mean and like <laughs> a- so we were like driving to nashville for my uh-huh. cousin's engagement party and I had to pee every five seconds. And I remember, like, trying to not tell oh. me what I had to pee. Oh. And he goes, come on, bladder face. Blah, blah, blah. And he was just being a brother. You know what I mean? He didn't know. He's like, why you got to pee all the time? Blah, blah, blah. Oh. And so when I found out I had diabetes, I milked it so oh. bad. I was like, can you believe you made fun of me when I was actually had a disease? And, like, oh. I still don't let him. He goes, I feel so bad for doing it. I was like, you should feel bad, you, you ass. Like, I was so mad. Like, Wait, so you're the youngest oh, of five? The babe- well, wow. okay. So... I have a lot of brothers and sisters. Okay. So my mom had four kids in her first marriage, and my dad had three in his, and then wham, bam, had me. So I have seven brothers and sisters. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. But I'm the only one of one with the same mom and dad. Oh, okay. Okay. It's it's crazy like an only child in a very big family. Yeah, it's like, you know, yours, mine, and our situation. Yeah. My (laughs) husband is one of seven. His mom, like, actually had seven kids. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a, that's. Where is he? She is a saint. Where is he in He is the right in the middle middle okay yeah. and he's nice. total middle child like 
and I'm total baby. <laughs> oh, like, well, okay. So tell us like where you, you grew up in Texas. Yeah. yeah. So I grew up in Baytown, which is outside of Houston. It's like 45 minutes from Houston. It's basically very blue collar chemical plant smells like crap, but it's home to me. Like there's so many <gasps> chemical plants. I'm from plants. South Louisiana. You get it. It smells like crap. My dad, my dad's from, my dad's from Louisiana. Well, he's from Bossier City. Yeah. I'm from Homa. So okay. it's really close. Yeah, my family lives in like in Shreveport and uh-huh. New Orleans and stuff like that. So I, yeah, I grew up in Baytown and it was, it's awesome. The best way like to describe Baytown and that's why I called my record Baytown is it's, it's country but it's got such swag. Like the people mm-hmm. there, like it's not just you know it's all kinds of kinds. Everybody lives in Baytown and I love that about Baytown. It's so cultural. There's so many. They love country music, but they love R and B. They love like mm-hmm. it's just. It's such a vibe, and and the same thing with Houston, like, you know, and, like, so many rappers have come out of Houston, but the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo is one of the biggest country events of the year, mm-hmm. and it's just, like, Houston area, that area is just such a, a fun, was a fun place to grow up. Yeah, so when did you move to Nashville, or tell us, like, your whole thing, so, yeah, so what was the next step? So, it's, it's kind of, I feel like a cat that's lived nine lives sometimes, but I graduated when I was 16, I graduated early, top of my class, don't ask me how many people, it was, like, 12, but <laughs> I, it was a homeschooling program, hey, but nobody can take from me that no. I was valedictorian. Okay? No, they can't. I'll never forget when Vince Gill goes, wow, that's awesome. I was like, yeah, only 10 kids, but we don't have to tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was so funny. All my family does music. And so I was like, I don't want to do music. I want to I want to be an actress because, like, they can't tell me how to act. They don't know how to act. And so I – because I was very opinionated. So I was like, okay, I'm going to start doing acting. And so I started going to these acting classes in Houston. And I got an agent out in L.A. And I was like, I'm moving to L.A. So at 16 – I moved to LA. Oh my for god! For a oh year wow. and a half, I was crazy by and so yourself. The, okay, so my dad <laughs> or my mom or my stepmom, somebody would stay with me every month. Okay, so okay. it was like a revolving door of people. My cousin would stay with me, and the fact that my parents let me do that at sixteen, it still cracks me up because my daughter Daisy wouldn't step foot in LA <laughs> at sixteen by herself. <laughs> but they knew that I was like sixteen, going on thirty. Yeah. Like I've always been an old soul. I've yeah. always been a go getter, and like. I mean, two, it's not like somebody wasn't there with me. So I was doing the whole thing. They gave me a year. They're like, We're, we'll let you ha- have a year here. Just if you get open some doors within that year, you can stay longer. But, you know, you have one year. I was like, okay. I did acting classes. I did all these cool things. I did some auditions. But I wasn't as busy as I wanted to be. So I had a lot of time on my hands. So, of course, I just picked up my guitar and started learning songs on YouTube and writing songs. And I was like, damn, I really like this. This mm-hmm. is fun. Mm-hmm. And for me, I... I really believe in focusing on one thing and when God really opens doors on that, like you can kind of, if you focus on like, this is the way somebody put it. They're like, if you're focusing on five recipes at one time, it's not going to be as good as if you focus on one, finish it, one, finish Mm -hmm. it. It's like putting the time into that one thing. And so doors were just opening for music more than they were for acting. And so I was like, okay, well, God, I, I don't want to move because I, I, I was, didn't want to be a failure at 16, okay? Oh <laughs> and so, but I was like, I don't want to leave and, like, be a failure or whatever. And so I met this woman, and she was like, I remember singing at some coffee shop on Venice Boulevard, and it was it was just crazy. And so this girl came up to me, and she's like, you're really talented. But there's so many scam artists. Like, yeah. like okay, like, whatever. Right. But she, she was actually somebody legit. She is like, I want to hook you up in Nashville. And I was like, I've already been to Nashville. Cause I would, <laughs> cause I would go, my cousins were in a Christian rock band. We went to Nashville all the time and I was like, Nashville would be fun, but I want to, you know, be here. I think mm-hmm. this is where I need to be. Mm-hmm. But I've always loved country music. Obviously I'm a country girl through and through. And so I came here and I fell in love with the writing mm-hmm. community mm-hmm. at 17. And while I was here writing, nobody knew me. Nobody, I wasn't, didn't have a publishing deal. I didn't have a record deal. And the voice came in for auditions and I was riding with this one girl and she was like, you should audition for the voice. And I was like, I don't want to audition for the voice. I've already auditioned for American Idol. They said no. And I auditioned for X factor. Did you really? I was, yeah. I auditioned for both of those uh-huh. and they said no. And I was like, I don't have like that Mariah Carey voice. Like, I have a good voice, but it sounds like I've been, you know, drinking Trulies and smoking cigs, and I don't do any of those. So it's like, I don't know what to say, you know? And so... I have like this raspy country voice and they were like, but that's the whole point of the voice is it's different voices. And I was like, mm-hmm. all right, I'm going to do like Blake Shelton. And I do like, <laughs> I don't mean, so I auditioned and I made it straight through the auditions in front of Mark Burnett. Ended up doing that, got on the show and it was so funny because the place that we had to go for quarantine, this was before quarantine was not cool, but uh-huh. now this is when it was cool. It was like, oh, this is cool. But there was like a quarantine period where, you know, you can't say anything, all those things. Mm-hmm. And so... 
Anyways, we were in L.A. for the auditions, literally two miles away from where I lived. Uh -uh. Not even a year before. Oh, no And I was like, isn't that such a God thing? Like, crazy, like, not even a year later, I moved back to Texas. I thought it was a failure, and I'm back at the place that I lived a year, not even, like, five months ago. It was crazy. So, was there, made it on the show, got done with the show, and then I went back. I started writing here, and so I was like, you know, I'm just going to live here for four months, just write, and then go back to Texas, and I'm... Never went home. Oh. Never went home. And then I've been here <laughs> for 10 years. Oh, wow. I know. Jesus, help me. <laughs> I <laughs> literally cannot believe I've been here for 10 years. And been through a few record deals. The one thing that I love about my story is I think it's a beautiful story of persistence. Mm-hmm. And I would not have written my journey any differently than it is. And, you know, I've been signed to a few different labels in town I've had a few different publishing deals I've had changes in my business but no matter where I'm at in my career music is still what I want to do and the daily grind of writing songs and seeing the fans and like the one thing that gets me through is the fans Mm -hmm. honestly Mm -hmm. because the fans don't know the bs that happens here right Mm -hmm. they just see you on stage and they're they love you, and I think that's what that's always what's kept me going. Yeah, and and two, becoming a mom has really changed me in so many ways because I put so much of my identity into my career. You know what I looked like. You know how I represented myself. If you know, I gotta I gotta make sure that I get on this or on that. Mm-hmm. And when I had Daisy, I was just like, none of that matters anymore. No. It's like, I need to be an example for her. Exactly. And, yeah. you know, be a strong example for her. Yeah. About somebody who continues to follow their dreams, but doesn't let this world and what their view of my success should look like yeah. determine my happiness. Because I'm honestly happy mm-hmm. with where I'm at right now. If you're not happy with where you are, you're never going to be happy right. when God gives you success. Exactly. I've seen people that have tons of number ones and have this quote unquote incredible career, but they're sad as mm-hmm. I'll get out and yeah. I don't want to be that way right. mm-hmm. and right. so I've I'm so grateful because of that and I you know just seeing her and being a mom it's just a new identity that has changed me in so mm-hmm. many ways I just love it and she's what six fast. months she's yeah. six months she looks just like you I know she is poor gorgeous. buddy my she husband so cute. I'm like she's got your nose <laughs> no <laughs> not really no she does she does like look like him and sometimes but she is definitely my karma copy yeah didn't mean for that to happen but here we are both of my children when they came out looked just like my husband and now as they're growing they're starting to look a little bit like me yeah, yeah. so just Do you have just a, love that two girls boy two girls. girls oh my gosh two girls 16 and 13 mm-hmm. i love that yeah and she has a boy six, girl yeah a little boy he's one and then a six-year-old girl oh my gosh yeah. i love that That's what's fun. their names jessa and judah Oh, I love the name yeah. Judah. Our best friend's name is Judah. Oh, yeah. That's good. Being a mom is the best, though. I have to it say. Is. It puts everything in perspective. It really does. And it just shows you that, like, you know, whatever you choose to do in your life, if you want to have babies, if not, mm-hmm. the one thing that I think that's so incredible is it's like, life's not about you anymore. Right. And I needed that. We're in a very self-serving industry mm-hmm. where everything's about you. Like, mm-hmm. you know, and I... Of course, know that my identity is not in any of this. It's in God and my family and what I do, but not, you know, the everything that this business is. But when having her, I was just like, none of this matters anymore. Mm-hmm. It's it's all about you, boo-boo. Mm-hmm. You're the queen of the castle. Like, you know, <laughs> I, and I fully know it, you know. Well, since you both are from huge families, do you guys want tons of kids running around? I would around? have like 30 kids, yeah. but Josh, you know. Josh wants like three. Yeah. So yeah. I want like five. Is he but. in the industry as well? No. So my husband played at Belmont, got a full ride there. And then he played for the Cubs organization. And okay. then he went to the military. And so now he's still in the military, but he also is in like finance and stuff like that. He's oh, been, nice. he went, to, he got a degree in business and works for this financial company here and he loves it. Awesome. He's, so he's like one of those guys that wakes up, looks at the stocks. I'm like, how's it going, babe? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, no, he's not in music. Thank God. Yeah. I love it. That, nice. I love it not being the same yeah. because I like feel like we talk about the industry all the time and he just like knows good songs. Like 
he doesn't get so caught. He, he just literally likes a song as a fan. Mm-hmm. And so I know if he doesn't understand a song that nobody's going to understand it. I wrote this too much. Like I wrote <laughs> like I made I was a songwriter in this when I should have just been like, OK, but he is. He's awesome. Yeah. He's such a good dad, too. That's so fun. How did y'all meet? It's so funny. We met the first time at church. We saw each other. I was looking like hell that day, too. I remember we had went out the night before. I almost didn't go to church that day. I was like, all right, I'll throw on a poncho and some boot-cut jeans and put my hair in a ponytail a and poncho. go. I literally was wearing a <laughs> multicolored poncho with freaking Miss Me boot-cut jeans and <laughs> buckle. Like, not the vibe. Thank you. Like, like, what the actual hell was I wearing? <laughs> That's what it always happens. Yeah, and of course I meet my future husband there, and he looks like a Greek god, and you're like, <laughs> all right, you're hot. You're def- don't look at me in this poncho. <laughs> and so anyways, but he thought I looked so cute. He was uh-huh. like, you just didn't care. You because I don't give a care vibe. And I was like, well, I had to go for that because I really couldn't at this point <laughs> do anything about it. And so then we were at the same wedding like two weeks later, and we hit it off, and we dated for like a year, broke up for two years, got back together, and got married within like three months. Oh, wow. And then we've been married for almost seven years. Wow. Oh, wow. You know, got married when we were young. Yeah, you were I young. I love what, it. How, how old were you? 21. 20. Yeah, mm. 21. That's I know. good. It's awesome. I was young. I was 22. When you know, you know. Yeah. And it's like, if you get married young, great. If you get married at, you know, 40, yeah. great. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that we need to start talking more about that. And it's like, I don't know. I But I found my person really young. Yeah. And I'm grateful for that. We just had him on this past month, and that's what we talked about. Was yeah. it was our twentieth anniversary, and wow, we were young. And actually, I mean, the way you are, we had Taylor at twenty six. I think yeah. I was twenty six. I had Daisy at twenty seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow, so it's very very similar. Yeah, I got pregnant at twenty six. It you know that was such a great time because we we had like six years of just we do yeah. whatever the heck we wanted yeah. to, you know, yeah. and. Wham, bam, thank you, man. We have a kid now. <laughs> so, it's so fast. It changes everything. It does. It really does. It yeah. really does. So with having her, I'm sure you're hypersensitive and you watch over her closely. That's how I am with my youngest with type one. You know, that's what, when I was thinking about if Daisy ever had to have type one, like I, my heart goes out to parents because yeah. like I would be so controlling with it. Like, yeah. And I, you have, cause you have to let them go. You, you have do. to, you have right. to. Because I remember my mom was really crazy about, I was 12, you know. Mm-hmm. But my mom, it was funny because this is like so my mother. And my, my dad's the more like motherly type. And my mom's more of like, honey, you're going to have to figure this out. Or are you going, I ain't doing this for you forever. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. but she was nervous. But she also was like, like shooting it to me straight. Like, you're going to have to like teach yourself. Like, yeah. I'll never forget. God. It, and I'm so thankful that I have parents, mom, a mom like this. But so... <laughs> We had to learn, like we were in this diabetes class, and they make your parents go to the diabetes class. I'm sure yeah. you know about this. Uh-huh. So they show you how to give the shots, and it was really interesting. And my mom was like, I ain't doing this, right? You got to learn it. And I was just like, okay. And my, oh. da- and my dad was like, be sweet. Like, you know, it was like, it was so funny. But but I'm thankful that my mom was so hardcore with me because she, you know, she was like, you need to learn this. Like, mm-hmm. you need to, you're, you're going to do it. Right. You're going to do great. And and I did, and I, you know, I, I knew how to do all of it, like. That's yeah, how it was, Taylor it was. It was so funny. It probably empowered you yeah. for her really to be did. like, I don't need to do this. You do it. Yeah, you yeah. got it. Like, there's no point, and I'm not going to give you shots right. at 12. You know what I yeah. mean? Or for the rest of your life, you're going to have to learn it. And I was like, okay. But I mean, think back now. I mean, you were 12 years old, and then at 16, you you fly the coop. Yeah. And so you had to do it yeah, by I yourself. Did. One of the funniest stories of having diabetes is we, so the school that I went to, this homeschooling, there was so many kids there, but we had like these little desks and they had like little panels up. And, and so anyways, I was doing a a shot at my desk and a kid went up to the teacher and was like, Hey, I think, I think Rachel's doing drugs at her desk. Oh my gosh. And she literally started crying, laughing. She was like, she has type one diabetes. And she goes, why is she giving herself a shot? Like, I think she's doing drugs. And I was like, no, like what the hell? It was like so funny. Like we we still laugh about that. My teacher and me. I was like, remember that kid that literally thought I was doing drugs? Like, well, first I, of all, why would I do it out in front of everybody? Yeah. Like, you know, like I go to the bathroom. I'm at least. Least. go to the bathroom. Yeah. I'm gonna be that. And I'm freaking yeah. like 16. Like, I mean, yeah. I mean, kids are crazy these days. Yeah. but I'm not that crazy. But I I grew up with a kid that had it like through elementary school, and every year, like, because you know you'd be in the same class like every yeah. other year, and his dad would come and they would present to the whole class mm-hmm. basically like 
this is what he has. Yeah. This is what it is. He would educate everyone on it so that yeah. like we never thought about it. Yeah. And like yeah. sometimes he might need to eat a piece of candy or whatever it was. Like they would educate us. I thought that was so cool. And I think yeah. it's so important to do that. And that's one thing that I should have said before is like all my team knows, hey, maybe have a bar in your pr- bag. Yeah. Maybe a juice. Like I always have stuff on me, but these are my signs of like of something sketch. Like I kind of go off and do a daze, like, you know, and so, and we're all prepared. My team's prepared. You can never over prepare somebody Mm -mm. for that. And it's not because you're, you know, something's going to happen. It's just so important for everybody to know, Mm -hmm. like educating everybody. Mm -hmm. Education is just key with with diabetes. Yeah. So totally. Yeah. Okay. I want to talk more about your career. Yeah. So you said you had like multiple record labels and everything. What's been the hardest thing you've kind of had to go through? Where I'm at now and the freedom that I have creatively is I think what's been hard for me in the past is getting signed because I'm different, because I write different, because I see the world differently. And then when I get there, I feel like I just keep trying. They kept trying to fit, fit me in a box that I couldn't fit in. Okay. And I, And it's no, like, this is the thing is every artist is different. It's not a, you know, circle hole for everybody. Some people are shaped like squares and we were shaped like triangles like Mm. not everybody's the same and when I look back I'm so grateful for my journey because every person that has been in my career they believed in me it's not that I just think for me where I'm at today and I look back I'm grateful for the journey because it's made me a better songwriter it's made me a better woman it's made me a better businesswoman and artist I just I'm so excited for the future generation because I think we can really educate any new girls that come into town like, hey, you know, fight for this. Yeah. Like you whatever makes you different. Yeah. Keep that because they're going to try to fit you in this mold of making you generic when you're not generic. Mm-hmm. You know, like whatever makes you different in this town and gets you noticed. It's like it sticks for a second. But yeah. It, and, and you know what? And it's more of like. I, you know, I, I moved here when I was 18 and you don't know what to stick up where you're like, okay, well that'll work. I'll do it. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I'll, I'll sing about that or I'll sing about this, but it, it's, it's, I didn't know how to fight for myself at 18, mm, 19, right. you know? And I, but, but now I'm like, oh hell no. Like I'm, I'm not putting out this that. song. <laughs> yeah. And songs that I write, like I was writing a hundred songs a year and you know, five were getting put out and just, it's just, it was just such a hard industry to like get your music out and so I'm really thankful for the industry now because you can put out music every month you can really do it ever mm-hmm. the heck you want mm-hmm. and it's really cool to see and I but the one thing I just love about Nashville is everything's like musical chairs like when I see people that have been in my past whether it's a label or a publishing deal we all just mutually respect each other because it's like you know if it didn't work out business, great. I'll go to lunch with you. But like sometimes mm-hmm. business doesn't work out, but that doesn't mean it has to be on bad terms. And that's right. one thing I love about this town is I've gone through some, you know, things in my career, but this town has still embraced me mm-hmm. and loved me. And and that's what this town's about. It's like, okay, that wasn't the right fit, but that's okay. We're still hoping the best for you. And they really do. Yeah, like, they awesome. do. It really yeah. is. Good. It's that's not awesome. a cutthroat. Even though we're in a cutthroat industry, mm-hmm. Nashville, I really think, has figured out making it, you know, they still care about the artist. Mm-hmm. And, like, I I just think it's 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 really, really cool about this town. But I've, you know, my music, it's the one thing, I, you know, I talked about the fans earlier, but my songwriting has always been so important to me. And writing songs that I believe, you know, are are bigger than me and are meant to be out and I one of the first songs that I wrote that completely changed my career and my life and the songwriting world was Love Triangle I wrote Mm -hmm. that song about my perspective of my parents divorce and how it felt to be stuck in the middle of two people that you love the most your mom and your dad and that song just opened so many doors for me in the writing community and songwriting's always been therapy for me it's always been a way that I've processed things in my life and I you know, I always want to be sacred when it comes to my songwriting and everything else comes second to that. But there's never a day when I'm headed to a write or I'm headed to do something that I'm just not extremely grateful. Like right. it's, it but really you're is more cool. into like the storytelling yes, side of things, absolutely. not necessarily just like, oh, this will be a hit. 
Yes. Yeah, like I mean, I do like gonna... songs that are hits. Well, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I do like storytelling, too. But yes. I do love to, you know, yeah. shake my butt, dance, like have a good time. Like, you know, the that's one me. we were all talking about was Bra Off. We oh, were yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> that, that song's so one. fun. It's so fun. That yeah. whole album is so much fun. Thank you. I Baytown, just, thank Baytown. you. It's yeah. awesome. I know. It's, I, I love that record because it's so storytelling, but it's so fun. It's mm-hmm. so fun. And the, new, the next two songs they're about to release are kind of like an extension of that. And that's the thing. It's like, I just want to have fun and put out good music. Yeah. And be a good example for my daughter and young girls out there and not even girls, guys too. Like, yeah. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I just, I'm just so grateful for this platform that I've been given. And I just want to continue that. And Baytown is probably one of my favorite projects. Did you I've write all of them yeah, as well? Yeah, I wrote every song. Are you record. serious? I've only released one song that I haven't written. No and that was on my record, Wild Horse. But wow. Yeah. But yeah, I've, I've written all my songs. I feel like Baytown, when you play it, you can tell like you just had fun. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. like yes. it's just like a But good I love time. that it has like Me About Me, Small Town Prayer. Mm-hmm. It has those really great songs. A song I wrote for my daughter called Made for Me to Love. You know, a song about my me and my mother's story called She Chose Me. That song is there's been over sixty thousand videos now made of wow. made on TikTok of, oh, wow. of people's stories of keeping their baby. Uh-huh. And it's like literally the most Aww beautiful thing Aww. ever that's another thing it's just like you have to follow your heart on what to release because god will bless it and yeah. i've just literally seen that with, with baytown we've hit over 100 million streams on the record wow, wow. and it's just it's just crazy because it's like we promoted it but you know i'm not on a major label right now i'm doing this independent like i'm just doing my own thing and i feel like when when the pressure's kind of off and you like care but you don't yeah that's when like Everything starts happening because it's like there's like this weight that's lifted off your shoulders and you're like, yeah. okay, I'm, I'm okay. You yeah, so. totally. So that, did that release in 2020? Well, it released or, last September. So it released, oh, okay. it released right after I had Daisy. Oh, right after. Yeah, okay. Like, yeah. And that's another thing. Like normally old me would have been like looking at the charts, like being crazy. <laughs> and, but I'm like here nursing a baby, like half awake, tweaking <laughs> out. And there's, there was no me like being obsessed with where my record was. I was just right. like, I just, I'm, I'm in survival mode. Yeah. You are in survival mode, especially those first yeah, you two are. months. Yeah, Woo-wee. nobody explains that to you. Uh, oh, uh, no, no, no one would have kids if <laughs> no. we told you, right? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> it's so funny though how God works because it's like six weeks later. I mean, I'm like healed up, feeling good. I'm like, let's do it again. I'm like, why did I say uh-uh. that? I know, you know, like I, know. Uh-uh. I don't know why because it's just like <laughs> it's all the love if were, hormones. If, yeah, if it were up to men, they would have one kid and be done. Uh-huh. And they couldn't do it again. I love, I love my husband, but <laughs> totally. My husband totally. was more traumatized than I was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh, mine we, too. When we talked about having three, John was like, uh-uh, right now we're man to man. Have a third, we'll be in zone, and I can't do zone. <laughs> that's <laughs> totally. so funny. Right, totally. we're good. That's so awesome. That's when they start raising each other, but that's great. Yeah. <laughs> that's true, yeah. So will you tour coming up? What's your yeah, upcoming so I'm, plan? Yeah, so I'm going out with Kane Brown. Okay. Love oh, Kane. Um, awesome. Me and him and his, his, his wife is my best friend, and so I'm so Aww. excited. We're going to have nine kids on tour, so <gasps> it's me. Walker Hayes and Kane. So I have Daisy. Walker has six kids. And then they have two kids, Cody and Kingsley. And so, so it is going to be wild. When like, is that? It starts in in May. Oh, so in we, May. Okay. we have some some dates in May. And then we have some dates in June. So it's going to be wow, fun. Wow. That's I know. so I'm fun. It's When's be the last time you toured? Oh, girl. I've... Well, I did a show in December after having Daisy. So that was my first show back. And I did a residency downtown at Old Red, like oh, yeah. big pregnant. Like I was just <laughs> wielding it in the bar, like oh, straight up. Like <laughs> I couldn't drink with everybody, but I was having a good time like I was. So, That's but fun. it was fun. Yeah. It was so much fun. Oh, that'll be so fun. Okay. And then I saw that you, are you acting a little bit? Weren't you in a little? Oh God. No. I was in a Hallmark movie. <laughs> okay. And uh, like, Honestly, I think my mother-in-law, that was her highlight of her life because she loves <laughs> Hallmark hilarious. during Christmas. But it was honestly so much it fun. fun. It was yeah. me and Sarah Evans and Winona Judd and Kix Brooks. Like so many awesome celebrities are in it. But it was it was awesome. I want to do more acting. I want to do more stuff in the TV space. I, I love stuff like that. And I really thrived when I was on The Voice because people could see my personality. So I really want to do more more mm-hmm. things like that for yeah. sure. Oh, that's so fun. Can we talk about the voice? Like how yes. uh, like how God, was like what whirlwind. was that experience like? I mean, I was seventeen, so it was like any other seventeen year old girl, like, holy crap, this is happening. <laughs> like, whoa. Yeah. Like I you know, my favorite thing about that show is it really like 
I think that I needed that first no. Mm -hmm. Like, even though it was such a big, people think that I won that year, but I didn't. Like, I was top 12. Mm -hmm. But that first no, like, set up a lot of, like, thick skin for me. Yeah. Because I realized, okay, I can be told no, but I know that I'm still talented and I know that I've got something. And Mm so I was able to move here. And so when other no's would happen in my life, it's hard, but. It really prepared me as a person. But that show was everything it needed to be for me. It was a great promotion Mm -hmm. tool. People got to know who I am. And, like, getting to meet Blake was the trajectory of my career. I mean, he helped me find a manager. He helped me, you know, with my deal with Big Machine when I first got here. Like, he showed me, like, this is what you should do. This is what you shouldn't do. He took me on tour. And, you know, Miranda took me on tour Mm -hmm. uh, because they were married at the time. And so it was just, like, to be embraced by them at such a young age it really set a precedent for me and um it's very 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 grateful yeah. and and he's been somebody that's been a sound piece throughout my, like a my big whole brother. he really is yeah. and he when he really loves somebody and cares about somebody he means it mm-hmm. and he stays and he's there and through the changes in my life for the last 10 years he's always been there mm-hmm. and he's been a friend that honestly means the world to me mm-hmm. and I'll never forget so me and my husband you know, we, we got married and then we had a wedding later. And so when, when I told Blake that I was married, this is the funniest thing ever. We were at St. Anejo and he literally was eating and he just dropped his fork and stopped eating. And he was like, well, I guess we're getting tequila shots. And like, it was just like so funny. And he was so, of course, so excited. He was just like shocked. Cause you know, I'm like his, I was at the time I was like, I was his baby girl. Like he yeah. was like, you know, he was like my, like, you know, like a second dad, like an uncle, like he's just so sweet, but he has been you know, just to our family, and it's just, it's, he's such a, he's class act. Oh, that's, that's awesome. amazing. That's yeah. good to hear. I, I know. Yeah, and then we did that song, Why I Got a Truck Together, which is one of my favorite songs. That's a good one. <laughs> I know, thank you. <laughs> Why I Got a Truck Sitting in the Driveway. Did y'all write it together, or did you I write it by it, yourself? I wrote it, and then I wrote it with him in mind. And okay. My favorite is the end of the song where he goes, back the truck up. No, not that. The truck, Ray. Talking about, because I always <laughs> I mean, yes, like, He's so yes. funny. <laughs> I was like, that's make amazing. sure you put something funny on it. He goes, oh, I got something special for you. I was like, okay. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so fun. He's he's great. And then he married Gwen Stefani, which is hilarious. Like, you know, I used to wear, y'all, I put my foot in my mouth. So I, you know, I used to wear her clothes all the time, like the Harajuku brand I loved. And I'm like, I remember telling her, I was like, oh, my God, I wore your, your shoes when I was like 13. And she was like. I, I literally, I probably made her feel so old. And I was just like, I mean, like, you look great. I was like trying to, like, well, she didn't care. Like, she was going so funny. So if you would have told my, like, you know, 12-year-old self wearing my high top hair Juku shoes that Gwen Stefani would be, you know, like in engaged your life. Yeah. to Blake at my wedding, I'd have been like, uh, no, she's not. But you That's know, it was, wild. It was so funny, though. I was so nervous at my wedding, like, because my, you know, crazy-ass family is coming up to them at the at the table and they stayed the whole night they did not leave early they stayed until we yeah. left like they party wow. like, awesome. it was so much fun and but when i saw like my country family coming up to them i was just like oh god y'all. <laughs> okay <laughs> like i thought i was gonna have to save them but they of course do so well in those situations yeah. like, yeah. when was when was hilarious. loving it but it was hilarious like you know, my uncles were going over there. I was, li- my heart was literally about, I was like, you know, yeah. it's my wedding. I can't worry about yeah, this. They're yeah. fine. They came. They obviously, <laughs> if they stayed, they're fine, you know. And so. They probably loved I wasn't. it. And then, of course, another great thing at my wedding was my mother-in-law, who is the most Christian woman you'll ever meet in your life. Super conservative. Awesome. Incredible lady. But like, you know, but she chugged a beer on the dance floor. Stop. And like, she can chug a beer better than anybody. Oh my gosh. And it was like her and Josh's two buddies and she beat all of them. She can oh down it gosh. in like two seconds. That's like hilarious. it was and like it was awesome. Like and I was That's just like yeah! <laughs> It was hilarious. Like she lets loose and I love it. I mean like oh it, 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 watching her chug that beer was the highlight. I love it. That highlight is so funny of the show. So what is Red a thing. pinch me moment for you? Oh my god, I've had a few since you started. One of them was definitely my Grand Ole Opry debut uh-huh. because Grand Ole Opry has always been my dream is to one day be a member. I love the Grand Ole Opry so much. Another one was playing Royal Albert Hall in London where the Queen goes. Um, <laughs> that was a that was a big moment for me. I'm trying to think, there's been there's been so many. When a uh, Wild Horse, my debut record, debuted at number one on the Billboard chart. Oh wow! I mean, mm-hmm. I've there's only been a few females that have done that with their debut record, less than ten. Oh no, kidding! Um, Shania Twain, Winona Judd, and so it's. For the, my debut record to hit number one, 
uh, on Billboard was was probably one of the biggest oh, accomplishments. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah, that's amazing. amazing. Thank you. It really is. It was super cool. So I think we know you're really close with Blake and a lot of the, yeah. the male artists. What, what's your relationship like with female country artists? It's been honestly like I think a lot of us females, we were up and coming at the same time. Like me, Lauren Elena, Kelsey Ballerini, Maddie and Tay. There's just been so many artists that we've all kind of went through this together. And I've... You know, I've I have such a great great relationship with all those girls. It's incredible to hang out with them because they understand the struggle that we've had to go through as women, mm-hmm. but also like we're all just doing it and making it happen. And mm-hmm. now we're in this, you know, at the time like me and Maddie and Tay have pictures on radio tour when we're like 17, 18, so little. And you know, Tay has a baby now. Mm-hmm. We're in these we're going through these phases mm-hmm. of life together and we know what it's like to want to be pregnant and to have a family but also want this career for ourselves. And I don't think that's like enough that people talk about is the juggle of that. Mm-hmm. Like being a mom and also being an artist, it's hard, but it's it's done every single day. Mm-hmm. And that community of women has like really been good for me. Like I've Talked to Hillary Scott about it from Lady Antebellum and um, a couple artists that aren't really in country music. But it's just been, it's a different dynamic. You know, Mm -hmm. it's not like, you know, my husband's doing music and I can be there and support him and have Daisy. Like, it's it's just different. So I did my first show in December. And when I was on stage, all I could think about was Daisy. Like, I was like nervous. I was like, oh my God, I gotta get back to my baby. And Mm -hmm. I like, it was an hour. It was 40 hours ago. (laughs) But it was... It was good, but it was still nerve wracking Mm because you still have that mom instinct. Like, even though you have like a nanny helping and stuff like that, it's different. Like, I'm the mom. Like, and and I'm having to let that go. But that the community of women here like have really helped me with that, and and inspiring other artists that you know, just there are times where we all get in a funk and it's important to stick up for each other and to be there. And Mm -hmm. I'm really excited about this new wave of women that are coming. I mean, some new songwriters in town. I have surrounded myself with female songwriters and this new wave of women is just so incredible because they are just being so unapologetically themselves and it's really cool to Mm -hmm. see. They're continuing to be vulnerable and to another level that it's inspiring to Mm. me. Like I'm, seeing this new group of, you know, songwriters and artists, and I'm like, wow, I got to step up my game. Yeah. <laughs> like, I need like, to be more vulnerable. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I've always been vulnerable, but I'm just saying, like, it's it's been really, really cool to yeah. see. You Do you know? get, like, tons of DMs from fans being like, I want to be where you are. I want to be a country music artist and yes. wanting advice, and I'm sure you get like reached out to all the I time. I do and I message I message them back, you know, sometimes when I have time. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I have no time anymore. Um <laughs> but I I love to reach like to talk to artists about their journey and stuff and I think the cool thing about the day and age that we live in now is there's so much that you can do in your bedroom. Mm-hmm. Like there's so mm-hmm. much you can do. Upload a video to YouTube, write songs like you can live right now. You can make a name for yourself right now. And I think that that's the cool place that we're in right now is like you can put out a song on Spotify if you want mm-hmm. to. You yeah. Need, you don't need oh, I never label. do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just like, it's, it's just, you need somebody to get you, the, get it on there, but it's so yeah. easy. Like you just pay some money and you do Isn't it. Isn't that but, how Justin Bieber was found? Yeah. YouTube. It was. YouTube. Right. And it's just yeah. like, there is platforms, you know, so many ways to, to grow your brand without the way that it used to be. And it's great because it's creating more opportunities mm-hmm. for these young artists and especially females. And I'm just, I'm really inspired, honestly, and um, and two, I think another cool thing that I've seen is it's not just young artists, because like I, of course, I love young artists, but I'm like, what about the you know 35 year old mm. girl that had five kids and she's a amazing songwriter and artist, right, but hasn't yeah. got the chance to do it because she's been a mom her whole life in a small town. Those are the people that are getting yeah. seen now too, yeah. and yeah. it's like we've got to start normalizing that it doesn't mm-hmm. always have to be the young, hot, yes. and over-sexualizing young girls. Like, that bothers me a little bit. Oh, my and God. And I just think, you know, well, she needs, just needs to be older and stuff like that. No, like, let her be young. Let her grow up. Mm-hmm. Like, let her write songs that are for the 15 and the 16-year-old and the 17-year-old girl. And when she gets older, she's, she's going to go through some things that make her want to write. Like, when I wrote God Made Girls, I was 17. That song was written from a 17-year-old's perspective. When I write, when I sing mm-hmm. God Made Girls now, it's like, I'm a woman and I'm singing it from a 27 year old woman's perspective. Right. Right. But I'm so thankful that I had those songs because that's the place in life that I was in. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's cool to see 
songwriters that I've never heard of make it on the scene in the last couple of years and they're older and they're mm-hmm. have had life. I'll mm-hmm. tell you one thing. I want to write with somebody that's been through some yeah. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. like because I know that I'm going to get a good song. It's been really cool that those walls are being, you know, the torn down. The traditions are, yeah. are like, mm-hmm. you know, and it's I, it's just really, really. It's a good point. It's a, I never it's a really it like that. cool. Yeah. I love that thing that Adele said. I'm not writing songs for TikTok. I'm writing songs for the 30 year old that doesn't understand TikTok. Like, you right, know what I mean? Right, like, right. I was like, yeah. straight up. Listen, I love TikTok, though. I mean, there's a few people. I get so stuck on that damn thing. I love it. Personally, I try to do the dances. It's weird. I'm, I'm getting it's better. Hilarious. I like have to have some of my friends like help me edit it. But it's it's fun. I mean, I'm just excited for women in music right now. It's It's going to be it's going to continue just being a rocket ship taking mm-hmm. off. So. You're such a good role model. You are. Oh, thank you. You're yeah, so nice. That's incredible. You're so fun. And yeah. like, I don't know. You oh feel gosh. like family immediately. It's Aww. interesting. I know. You walked yeah. through the door and it was like, oh, hey, wait, have I met her before? I know. Oh gosh, I mean, she's so it's nice. Just, it's, you're very I literally very about amazing. to leave here and go get a big burrito. So <laughs> if that doesn't like yes. sum up me. Well, we thank you so yes, much for thank being you. on. Oh my gosh, thank we know you. you're busy and no, time I'm away so from blessed. baby. No, yeah. thank you. So thank you so much. Thank, thank you. I appreciate you. it. I feel like I'm a little bored tonight. I feel like I could use some fun. I will take over the city, yeah, baby. For my lead, everybody get ready.